If you're a less athletic player, you gotta find any way to get an advantage. And this means many times, instead of studying the John Morants and the Anthony Edwards, who are good to watch sometimes, but also just generational athletes, finding more low key players to learn and gain knowledge from. So for you, this video will be gold for picking up techniques that you can add into your game. So for this video, we'll be using four players who you may or may not have heard of, but are absolute killers. And this isn't to say these guys aren't athletic, because they definitely are. It's hard to find players at this level who aren't athletic, but they aren't the most explosive and they exhibit qualities that are based around skill, tactical IQ, and that players who aren't the most athletic can add to their toolbox and imitate a bit. So this would be Kostas Lucas, Nico Lapravidola, Thomas Walkup, and Marco Bellinelli, who most of you guys know from being in the league, but whose old man style game is crazy fun to watch right now for Bologna. If you've heard and even studied these guys, you know, and I rock with you. If you haven't heard of them, well, I still rock with you heavy, but it's time to get you dialed into some EuroLeague. Why do I like studying EuroLeague? And in the case of this video, some of the domestic leagues in Europe too? Well, it's just a far more realistic basketball style than the league. The rules, the style of play. If you're studying hoop, it's low-key the best. Let's dive into it, give you some tools to add. So first off, a foundation we have to set is this. Don't try to out-athlete better athletes. Embrace being a less explosive but smarter player. So many slower players try to make up for being less explosive by going 110% or hoping they can create with a burst of explosion, and it works against them so often. Once you understand that there's so much more to basketball than just athleticism, and so many different ways to get past defenders and open up the game, now you can really start having some fun. And much of this is realizing that it's not about blowing by defenders or making them look stupid, but just getting a bit of a step on them. If you can just even get a small advantage like this on a defender, then the world opens up. It's in your hands to convert. Maybe you take a wide angle now if you got more space. Maybe you make them pay by closing the angle and bumping them when they're a bit out of control. Maybe this is getting into space across the court staying even with them and finishing creatively around the rim, making a counter when they make an aggressive jump by you, the options are limitless. But if you realize that all you need is this small advantage, it empowers you as a less explosive player. Now, how do you actually get this small advantage? That's a million dollar question. Well, one way is just initiating physicality early in the drive, which can make it tough for the defender to comfortably slide and just throw off the rhythm and feel since frankly, they're probably a bit annoyed or pissed off like here since you're initiating that physicality. Or as you get a bit more into your drive, by using this off arm to push yourself forward and the defender backwards, as you see here. This can be a big separator between no advantage and getting that advantage that you need. Then of course is pace. First off, off of the dribble. Faster players can get by without doing this at times, but as a less athletic player, you can look a lot faster by changing speeds and doing it unpredictably especially when you use your eyes in situational deception like these and combine this with a quick, slow to fast transition, you'll often get that step and more. So when you don't have an advantage, bring the speed down, lull the defender to sleep for even a quick second, and then that next acceleration will feel that much quicker and tougher to guard for the defender. This goes for off the catch too as you slow down your catch which I think is a super undertaught skill. Don't get me wrong, you're still making a crazy quick zero second decision to attack this closeout, but you're patient and you're catching it at a bit slower of a speed. Why? Well, first off, it's unpredictable. As he catches here, it looks like he's relaxed and not about to attack, but he quickly drops into a rip and goes by. Same thing here, he's not stopping and waiting, but instead catching at a slow speed and getting the defender off guard. Number two, it allows the defense to get closer, which sounds like a bad thing, but it creates more of an advantage for you since you're attacking when they're here and not here. And finally, it gives you more time to make a more clear read, play with more composure, and be more patient. So you're less likely to travel, but you're also able to get a feel for how the defense is playing it and have less tunnel vision to fake and play it how you need to. Now, when you already have an advantage on a closing defender, just go. Don't waste any time on attacking that. Next are fakes, which seem so easy and basic, but aren't used nearly enough, really at any level. At least till guys get older and they're like, oh shoot, I can't rely on athleticism anymore. Let me start trying this. So imagine if you add this in early, because again, it's not about getting a wide open shot off, but rather getting here. We're getting a defender up for a give and go. And many times a simple, well-executed fake is better than any move you'll make. The old man game is priceless. And finally, get really good in the pick and roll. You don't need to be super quick here because it inherently creates an advantage for you to work with. 
And many times quicker players are actually worse pick and roll players because they get tricked into going too fast. Whereas slower players are like, okay, I'm not gonna get sped up. I'm comfortable going at a slow speed. And therefore they allow plays to open up and are able to see the floor more comfortably. Now, once you get around the rim, this is the part where many less athletic players get stuck. But again, sometimes it's actually about using slower speeds to your advantage, not entering the lane in 100%, and having the composure to read the game and be unpredictable. Don't try to out-athlete athlete shot blockers. It's gonna take more craftiness, timing, and unpredictability, and patience. But it's an advantage to you, especially if you develop a really good feel for when defenders aren't ready to contest effectively. Like here, having that feel that this defender is moving this way, and this defender is far enough behind him to have space from. This takes a ton of experience and getting blocked a lot to develop it, but it's priceless. Also super valuable is being able to throw off timing, maybe with a slow jump like this, or a little fake to get them jumping early and you take one more step. Again, this doesn't take athleticism and gives you clear space to finish. And most importantly, you gotta be confident around the rim. Don't worry about getting blocked or else you're gonna go up tentatively and you'll be more likely to. If you go in with confidence in your creativity, you're way more likely to convert on these. But at the same time, don't always rely on finishing at the rim. Get really good at floaters. Because if you don't always have to attack these trees and get super crafty, and you can rely on a nice little floater game, why not do it? Moving on, and this is an obvious one, being able to shoot the rock and just as importantly, find ways to get looks off ball is absolutely necessary for less athletic hoopers. But this takes some special abilities without athleticism to make sure you're getting these off. First, since you're probably not relying on elevating to get these off, you gotta create more space beforehand off the ball and then limit the delay between getting set and into the shot. So in other words, yes, having a quick trigger, but also being able to get from here where you're catching the ball to actually starting that shot quickly without a delay to get on balance. Off the dribble, similarly, it's about being quick off the ground, not necessarily how high off the ground you get. It's good to be able to elevate, but not every player can. And yes, this comes down to the quick pop or elasticity that you have, but also the fluidity of your shot, the footwork, and the pickup to limit any delay you have going from decision to shoot into the actual shot. This is definitely some low-hanging fruit that's a pretty easy quality to improve on. Finally, find easy ways to score. Transition. Cuts. All things that don't require athleticism. You're gonna have to take advantage of these to separate yourself and be most efficient. Like Bellinelli shoots very well around the rim percentage wise, but it's damn near all off of cuts, which makes it so much easier to shoot efficiently. And again, in terms of scoring with the ball, try to score off of times where you have an advantage, like a closeout situation, a pick and roll, rather than just going ISO. It's probably not gonna be your game and that's okay, as long as you're hunting these advantages. And this is off topic, but let me clarify something. The reason why at the beginning of the video I mentioned that these guys are athletic is because even if they're not the most explosive in their league, these guys have more nuanced athletic qualities that you can develop far easier than getting a crazy vertical jump in lightning speed. You can check all of that in this video, but think about the basketball strength, the fluidity, the body control, and much more that this stuff takes. It's not as apparent as explosiveness, but it's definitely athleticism, subtle athleticism. And overall, if you want to be even with or better than athletic players in a very athletic-based game, you have to be superiorly skilled and more importantly, have an unreal feel for the game. So you got to train a bit crazy sometimes to, yes, master the fundamentals, but also get good at doing things that most people typically wouldn't teach or typically be able to do. You need to expand your options. Imagine if these guys couldn't do any of this. Take care of all the fundamentals and then be able to make tough shots, have crazy touch around the rim, all that. They'd be cooked at a high level. Or even at the highest level, imagine if Luka, Jokic, Trey Young, Steph, and others weren't able to do things like this because coaches told them not to do what made them special since it's never going to work or these skills are too crazy. They wouldn't be where they're at. So you're going to have to step outside the box. You're going to have to get unbelievably skilled, but I'm confident in you guys to go do it. Go work on your game. Go get skilled. Go play and apply all of this stuff. And of course, continue to work on your athleticism, but never be held back by feeling like you're not the most explosive on the court. As always, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure to tap in with everything we got going on, the virtual academy, all the trips we're taking soon to come do camps with you guys around the world, our summer academy in Miami, and much more. I'll put all that in the description. I'll see you guys next time.